When my business, Singular, found itself in challenging financial circumstances, I discovered after a lot of searching that the core of the problem lay in what I, as the CEO, was focusing on. We'd gone from a 300 grand profit to a 200 grand loss in 12 months, which is an impressive swing by any standards. And it's fair to say that I was panicking. Seeing the balance on our bank account fall week after week was terrifying and all-consuming. And as a result, my focus was consistently on failure. All I could think about was what happens if, and the answers were rarely reassuring. With that focus, I was making decisions from a place of caution and fear, which meant playing small, being defensive, and losing track of the big picture of what we were trying to build. It was only when I changed that focus and started concentrating on the positive outcome I wanted that things started to move in the right direction. Where you direct your focus will drive the performance of your business, positively or negatively. And successful leaders find a way to balance an optimistic vision of the future with realistic risk management, even in the darkest of times, allowing them to progress and grow without falling victim to naive optimism. So there's been Harvard Business Review research that has found that leaders who concentrate on positive outcomes and communicate a vision for growth, unsurprisingly drive higher engagement and performance among their teams. Jeff Bezos long set an example for this behavior by continually focusing Amazon staff on long-term growth in the face of pressure to drive short-term profitability reinvesting heavily into their R&D and logistics in moves that laid the foundations for the behemoth the company has become today. But at the same time, blind optimism will lead you to unnecessary risks, so you must also mitigate the downside. In his brilliant book, Anti-Fragile, Nassim Nicholas Taleb argues that robust, resilient systems, including businesses, are built on a balance of mitigating downsides while remaining open to opportunity. And it'd be hard to argue that Elon Musk is anything less than aggressive and ambitious in his vision, consistently focusing on what's possible, but he also has a strong track record of creating fallback strategies that reduce his level of risk, such as strategic partnerships at Tesla, cost-cutting and revenue-creating at X, and building his personal brand overall to drive share value in his companies. Now, there are three simple practical steps that you can take to keep focusing on upsides while managing downsides. Number one, decide what you want and plan for success because it all starts with a clear vision of what you want to achieve. That vision will keep you motivated and focused and a strategic plan for success ensures that you're taking the right actions to drive your desired outcome. Then, step two, identify and mitigate the risks. List everything that could possibly go wrong and create strategies to either reduce the risk of them occurring, minimize their impact, or both. Deloitte have reported companies that regularly perform SWOT analyses, of which this is a light version, are more resilient in the face of challenges, and Apple has become famous for heavily investing in supply chain risk management. And then number three, take the actions you've identified, execute them, and return to focusing on the upside. Once you have your list of actions and they're underway, put your risk list away. You've done what you need to do to position yourself for success so your focus can return to where it should be, although you may want to revisit that list from time to time. A CEO's focus shapes their organisation. While relentless pursuit of the upside provides direction and motivation, it's important to acknowledge and plan for the downside. By balancing optimism with thoughtful risk management, you can steer your organisation toward growth and resilience. Where does your focus lean? Take steps today to rebalance it.